and welcome to another episode of Linda Hall Library's Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm the Manager of Strategic Partnerships here. And our guest today is CEO of WeCode KC, Tammy Buckner. Tammy, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Yes, so we are going to start off with a quick question of your kind of career trajectory. The STEM ecosystem is quite broad, as we know, yes. um, but you have primarily focused on technology. So could you share what that journey has looked like for you? Absolutely. It's been amazing, for number one. Um, I love everything about technology. Um, I have been in areas such as software development, project management, business systems analysts, and have taken my career throughout each of my life spans of just being a part of tech. Although it's been a challenge, to say the least, for women, uh, specifically in technology, but it's for overall for me, it's been a lucrative career path. Uh, that's why I encourage so many people or so many women to get involved. Um, I started probably involved with technology. Uh, my parents bought me a computer when I was way young and I took it apart. Probably wasn't supposed to do that, but I did. I took it apart, I put it back together, and it did actually work. Um, but just wanted to see what was going on the inside of it. I was probably doing coding before that it was really a buzzword, uh, just doing different things, playing video games, but putting things together in that sense. Um, as I, you know, gone on through high school and got to college, um, at that time, I was going to, started at Central Missouri State, and then went to DeVry, and at that time, coding wasn't really popular, you know, or even computer science, I would say, was not really popular with women uh, or girls. I started in electrical engineering. Uh, my mother was, um, she worked at Honeywell, at that time it was called Bendix. And that intrigued me with different electrical, you know, um, concepts. So I started with electrical engineering and quickly realized that's not where I really wanted to be. But it was fascinating because I got a chance to, you know, have my hands into, you know, electrical and different wires and, you know, LEDs and things like that. So that obviously um, intrigued me. But I ended up moving into computers because I really just like the fascinating part of, you know, seeing something that I just created and it's showing on the screen. So that's literally where I started, uh, computer science. That's really cool and I think that that speaks to the various ways in which young people can get interested in STEM because it comes from oftentimes weird and random inspiration or getting a computer and just deciding that I'm going to take it apart. Absolutely. Those are really unique stories and they're all very different depending on the person. So thank you for sharing that. Yep, absolutely. So at the library, you know, we, we have historical strengths. We acquire um, different collections um, and materials um, based off of a, through I guess more of a historical lens. Did you have any inspiration from people, from historical figures, um, from the STEM community that you might have looked up to whenever you were younger? So, yeah, th so there weren't a lot of women, you know, at that time, but now, of course, there's so many, you know, that we can start looking up into. But, you know, growing up, you know, the, like I said, the Grace Hopper, the Katherine Johnson that I had a chance, an opportunity to start reading about. I think that that is a, a really important thing to discuss because even now, so the library, we have a specific acquisition focus on women and people of color, mm -hmm. but we're doing that because for so long it was, you know, the STEM industry, by and large, were pretty much um, consisting of white men, but even for the people of color and women who were participating in those inventions and, you know, um, any, any sort of advancements, they weren't often, they were often overlooked or ignored, um, oh, or they would, that they were kind of ripped off, right? The, the work that they would have, absolutely. they wouldn't even get credit for, which is very frustrating. Yep, um, absolutely. So what has that experience, you know, Kansas City, I would say that the STEM community is still not as diverse as we'd like it to be, but that's happening not just here in a lot of other cities too. Right, absolutely. What has your experience been as a woman of color in Kansas City and how has that changed over the course of your career? Yeah. Um, it's given me a lot of opportunity, per se, you know, in the tech space. Um, I've worked at some amazing opportunities and some amazing companies that has allowed me to broaden mm -hmm. my skill set that has taught me a lot. Um, and I can definitely attribute those to the organizations that I work with, some of the largest digital marketing firms in Kansas City that, you know, my dream space, you know. So, and I think that opened the doors for me that not only did I then see a lot of women, still at that time not a lot of women of color, 
but women that I um, basically, some of them did, like taking me under their wing, you know, and helped me along the way. Because at that time, you know, I was going into a space where, again, I didn't see a lot of people that looked like me, but it still allowed me to open doors. There were so many doors open, and then allowed me to see different things that I would not have seen, you know, if I was just siloed in one space. Even at that time, there wasn't a lot of um, entrepreneurial, you know, um, spaces and things that are, you know, happening right now that allow people to see, you know, what's going on in the tech space, why we need to be a part of that, why we need to be a part of entrepreneurial um, experiences and things like that. So, it's it's gotten a, it's gotten better, but I'm not going to say it has gotten to the point where it's still wide open. There's so many challenges for women in technology, so many challenges. At the same time, there's organizations such as Kansas City Women in Technology that's great, that allow women to come in and just feel like we belong, which is so important. Because when we're in, the, when we're in a workforce and the culture doesn't look like us, we start feeling like we don't belong there. Of course, we know it's a lot of men. Um, and sometimes we don't feel like our voices are getting heard. Sometimes we feel that we're getting overlooked for different promotions. But I think an organization such as Kansas City Women in Technology allows us to help even, you know, build our confidence up. Because now we're around other women that's likely going through the exact same thing. And we can talk to them and we feel like, you know, how do I address this situation? And how do I address this? How do I, you know, um, handle different situations. So I think those organizations are great. We need many, many more of those. Definitely, you know, one for, um, and I'm just not just going to say women of color, because, you know, it's all about just being in that space and just being a woman in tech is difficult. So black, white, brown, purple, we have to stick together and figure out how do we overcome this and how can we bring more of it, especially our young girls so that they can see this truly is a space that they can be a part of and they feel welcome. They feel that they can, you know, now um, take a hold of this space and, you know, feel like it's, it's, it's for them and it's not a boy's world. So that's, I think that's the important thing right now. I totally agree. I think representation, I know that we keep saying that, but it is very important and we're going to keep saying it until it is, we are all fully represented. I think yeah. that that's something that we need to keep shouting. Um, we need to keep shouting absolutely. until the numbers change. Exactly. Until no, I, they change. I totally agree. And to your point about belonging, there's a big difference between belonging and fitting in. And oh, belonging is important. And it's not feeling like you belong is very valid for a lot mm -hmm. of women and people of color mm -hmm. still. And so I'm, I'm glad that we're starting to have these conversations because yep. we need to be more actionable. Absolutely. And so how do you, aside from these organizations like the Kansas City Women in Technology, uh, the various um, initiatives that we're trying to do in mm -hmm. Kansas City, what else would you suggest? How can we make a truly inclusive and diverse and collaborative ecosystem here mm -hmm. within the STEM space. And how, um, I, I think, you know, you're probably doing a lot of great things with We Code KC, if you wouldn't mind kind of sharing some of your best practices. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the program We Code KC has been a tremendous um, force in the community. Our goal definitely is to work not only with women and young girls, but the minority population itself. Mm -hmm. We want to show how important it is to look at the technology space for that career path to be a path, a sustainable path, to change economic growth. Technology is an industry that is, can be so lucrative. Once you get into that space, there's so many areas. I know a lot of people think, you know, we talk about coding and we talk about uh, programming, and they may think that um, software development, you know, they look at it as a person just hunched over their computer all night long, you know, drinking, you know, energy drinks just to stay up. But there's so many other areas in technology. You have graphic designers, you have user experience developers, you have project managers, and all these other areas that you can go into um, so that you can truly find what you're looking for you know, and being a part of that. Some of the students that we get at We Code may be students that some are just may not, not fit into sports. They not, don't fit into, you know, getting involved with music. And that space of, you know, being that 
you know, person that's trying to figure out how to fix something or their imagination that they can use that in getting exposed to technology and they can use that to fix and solve a solution, you know, solve problems. Um, so I think that's been the amazing part that we have been able to provide different projects for kids to come in and get their hands dirty and then figure out how do they fix it? How do they solve this problem? So I think just opening the door and exposing them to things that they rarely see, you know, and making it possible for them to work on. Yeah, creating experiences are, are they'll stick. And those are the things that they'll you've stick. got to create and they're helping kind of um, add tools to the tool belt of a young person. So I think that Absolutely. that's super important. There's a few initiatives, um, STEM education initiatives that the library is doing now. Mm -hmm. The Kansas City Invention Convention is one of them. Yes. Um, and yes, kind of giving real world learning and kind of in real time learning yes. so young people can kind of um, work on the fly and on mm -hmm. their feet. That's super important and valuable to a young person. It's, so. imp it's important that they learn these skills and then they get a chance to apply Absolutely. it. Absolutely, yeah. You know, it's a difference when you're in and you know not knocking you know different um, schools or things like but when you're sitting in school and you're just reading but you're not able to apply that but then if you are actually you know learning code and then now I can apply that to something so one of the projects that we've worked on with our students are using a Raspberry Pi which is a small little computer looks like the size of a credit card and they get a chance to not only learn about Python, a programming language, and now they can take that and then create something using a Raspberry Pi. So now they can see what they just learned and now they can apply it to something that they created. So I, I think that, that sticks. I love that it's called a Raspberry Pi as well. I had no idea. I just learned yep. something very new. Amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So what would you, what do you tell, what kind of advice do you give to young people in your program whenever they might be hesitant or they might feel like they don't have the chops for it because they might not be super inclined to science or mm -hmm. math or whatever the case may be? What yeah. do you tell them? It, that's a good question. I tell them, you know, it's anything is possible. You know, a lot of times they don't get a chance to see people that look like them. And we talk about that all, that, all the time. Representation matters and seeing people that look like them, now they feel that they can do it. And I, I do give them my story. I talk about it all the time because I am so thankful and grateful of being in this space and I've had the opportunity. I want to be that mentor for them. So when they do have questions and they are asking, does it really, can we really make this money? Or, you know, and the kids nowadays, they are so open or they, they ask so many questions. Well, how much money do you make? And, you know, I'm like, mm, okay. <laughs> but, and it's, but it's so fun that they are observant and that they are intrigued by it. And they want to know. You know, they're very curious about, you know, this space. If we're talking about it, how much money can we make? Um, and I think it's, it's not about just being a part of technology or learning it, but now how to apply those skills. And now that we're teaching them that, we're showing them, you know, what areas that they can be a part of and how it truly can build their confidence. And it's not just about, you know, tech. It's building their confidence and it's applying to other areas about how to, you know, critical thinking skills, helping you with problem solving skills, and especially with, you know, even public speaking skills. So all of these skills technology can be a part of and that's exactly what we, we talk to them about at all times. That's, no, that's perfect. I think that we do need to have a more holistic approach whenever we're kind of stewarding the next generation of pioneers, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because talking about money, those are transparent conversations oh, that I goodness. wish that I had had when I was younger. That's really important right. and it's valuable and it is tied to tech. Yep. And yes, speaking skills, critical thinking, all of those things, are they're all um, <clears throat> different avenues of a, a person's experience, mm -hmm. experience. Mm -hmm. and they're not, si they shouldn't be siloed. So right. it's, it's good that you guys are doing it more holistically. I yeah. like that a lot. Definitely. So um, in the library, we have the historic strengths that we're really focusing on. We also really want to support and uplift the um, people in the community who are doing work now, Absolutely. but we also are focused on building that next generation of, of, of inventors and pioneers. From your point of view, what does the future of STEM look like? Um, I guess um, the whole overarching community of STEM, but more particularly with women and people of color. Mm. What do you see? Um, it could be Kansas City specifically or um, at, a, at a larger scale. Yeah. I see more women getting involved with technology. I see the more they are in tuned and exposed to what it really means and how it can truly change their life, their um, economic. I mean, I feel that once they see how important, because technology touch every single industry, 
I mean, even if you are in the food industry, if you're in the health industry, technology touches that some kind of way. And even if you are an entrepreneur, someone has to do the back end or your back office work. It's involving technology so that you can, have, you can be more effective and you can run your business more efficiently. And so I see when women see how important technology can be for them, I feel that they would start, you know, even if you learn just a little bit, because everyone needs to learn how to code. Excel program, an Excel program. People don't understand that is coding. Mm -hmm. Seriously, that is the basic of coding. And if you are working in Excel, you're coding. Data analytics, all of this is applying to technology. And I think when people see how um, important it is in every space, then they'll realize, wow, I need to be a part of that. How can it apply to my life? I so, totally agree. Yeah. And I'm, I'm excited for the future. I think we have a lot to work on and a lot okay. to do. But the more conversations we have like this, I think the better we are together. So Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you I so do. much for your time. Thank Sammy. you so really much. I appreciate it. the opportunity. Yeah.